Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. I'm excited about this book because I was having a conversation with some four-year-olds the other day, and they were fascinated with aliens. And then I came across this book. It's called If You Come to Earth by Sophie Blackall. She's the author and the illustrator, and the publisher is Chronicle Books. So I'm going to read it with their permission. So thank you very much, Chronicle Books. Um, one thing I do need to say about this book is she really thought and thought and thought because there are 38 pages that I had to put together for this book. So you know how I love to talk. I'm going to try not to talk too much <laughs> during this book so it doesn't last too long. So long that I might lose you. I don't think I'll lose you. It looks like it's a pretty good book. So here we go. If you come to Earth. Oh, my goodness. Are these maybe what she imagines aliens to be like? I don't know. Here's the title page. Dear visitor from outer space, if you come to Earth, here's what you need to know. Now, before I turn the page, what kind of stuff do you think you have to tell an alien, an outer space person, before they get here? Because there's so much about our planet that I would want them to know. So let's think. And then maybe you'll see what your idea was in some of these pages. You can find us near a big sun and a tiny moon and a bunch of other planets. Ours is the greeny blue one. There's the sun. There's our moon. This is Mercury and Venus and Earth. But you know what that one is. Oh, it's too hard to talk. I want to say so many things about the pages. <laughs> the green and blue bits are land. I'm sorry. I'm going to try that again. The green and brown bits are land. And the blue stuff is water. Yeah, I'm pretty sure our planet doesn't look like any other planet in the world, in the universe. So we definitely would have to tell them how to find us, right? People mostly live on the land in big cities and small towns and tiny villages or just in the middle of nowhere. There's that person's house from a bird's eye view. We live in all kinds of homes. That's so true. All kinds. Look at them all. And down here, these people are saying, we lost our homes in a fire, in a flood, in a war. So I'll just give you a moment just to look at all the different homes. In all kinds of families. And I'll give you a moment just to look at all the different kinds of families. There are more than 7 billion people on Earth. We all have bodies, but every body is different. 7 billion. except for my friends who are identical twins and look the same. They look exactly the same, except for Mustafa's mole. Oh, look, ah, he has a mole and he does not. Ah, so they are identical. No, they're identical. But I guess there can be one teeny tiny different difference between them. Inside our heads, we are usually thinking you can't see our thoughts, but sometimes we show our feelings on our faces. True. And an outer space person might not realize that. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> look at him. Even if we don't feel like it, we get dressed every day. We wear different clothes, depending on what we do and where we live. 
and if it's hot or cold. All this is really good information. There's lots of different weather in the world. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Whenever pe wherever people live, we usually have to go someplace else. There are lots of ways to get there. Look at all of the transportation on this page. Wow. I'll give you a moment. Let me get my pointer. I have to stop on this page. So I see buses. I see mobile homes, tractors, buses. I'm sorry, I already said buses. Um, Double-decker buses, fire engines, fire trucks, a limousine, <laughs> a camper, a Volkswagen Bug, and then transportation for the water, transportation for the air. Lots of ways to get there. I wonder if there's other ways of transportation in outer space. I'm a kid and kids go to school to learn stuff. So we'll know what to do when we're grown up. Grown-ups do lots of things. It's so true. Let's look at some of them. A beekeeper, that's me. A baker, maybe? I think she's a baker, an astronaut, a comedian, um, someone who studies, possibly a librarian or um, um, a full-time student, a barber, a tennis player. Oh my goodness, so many, so many. A farmer, a dancer, um, a botanist, which is a person who studies plants. Uh, law enforcement. Gosh, a dentist? Is that a dental tool? I'm not sure. A doctor. So many things. Gosh, do you know what you're going to be when you grow up? Is school helping you figure that out? But when people are not at work or at school or sick or asleep, we get to do whatever we want. Whatever we want. <laughs> I don't know if it's whatever we want, but we get to do fun stuff. School can be fun, work can be fun, but we get to do leisure stuff, stuff that we get to choose. We can play board games, dancing, ice skating, play a sport, sing by a campfire. Oh, that's this is all important stuff to tell somebody who's going to come visit our earth. Whatever we are doing, we need to eat when we are hungry. I wonder if they eat. Some of us have more food than others. We all need food and water to survive. True. Looks like a big Thanksgiving meal. Mm -hmm. Well, I said Thanksgiving because of the turkey, but there's pizza, fish, cake, bread, charcuterie board. We get water from the rain, which flows into little streams and big rivers and all the way to the sea. You can't drink the sea because it's too salty. That is so true. You can get very sick. But look, it all flows into there and then somehow it comes out of our faucet. That's a whole other hour conversation. The sea looks empty. But actually, it's full. Fish can swim, but they can't walk. Most animals can walk or swim or gallop or hop, but they can't fly. Some birds can swim and walk and fly. So if I had to choose, I'd be a bird. Me too. I have dreams of flying all the time. So it makes sense that I should be a bird. Birds can sing. So can whales. People make all kinds of music on our own and all together. Some of us who are deaf talk with our hands and faces. 
Some of us who are blind read with our fingers. Hmm. So it's talking about the language that we do, that we use when we make noises with our throat and our mouth. And then there's also other languages that you can make with your hands and your face. Or you can communicate through braille, through dots. If we are blind, we can imagine colors as shapes. and sounds. These are the colors you need to paint everything in the world. Some things are part of nature and some things are made by people. So all of these humans cannot make this kind of stuff we can make. What kind of stuff beings from outer space would make. Some things are big. Some are small. Oh, that's a ship. And that's the Eiffel Tower. And that's dinosaur bones. And then we've got too many things to talk about. But look at all those tiny things. Some things are invisible, it's true. Wind, invisible cloaks, ghosts, gravity, electricity, the smell of roast chicken, old socks, frangipani, wet wool, sound waves, germs. I don't know what frangipani is. And I'm making up the way that you say that. I don't know what it is. Some germs can make you sick. So can eating a woolly milk cap toadstool or breathing in smoke or getting spat on by a slow loris. I don't know what that is. Sometimes people get hurt by accident. Oh, look at this fight. Mom, mom. Sometimes we hurt each other. That's true. This is a picture of a war. And this is a picture of another type of a war, a fight. Looks like it might be between siblings or friends. No, siblings, because they say mom, mom. It's better when we help each other. I'm going to give you a moment just to look at all the help going on in this picture. So much help holding the door. Look, she can't reach. Ah, playing with the baby. Looks like they might be reading together. Looks like she might be helping someone with their computer. Babies are not very good at anything. Except being cute. Kids are good at lots of things. Grown-ups can do just about anything. Until they are really, really old. But by then, the babies are grown up and can help as she is helping this elderly man. Older people are good at telling stories about the world when they were young. Oh. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about seeing my children with my parents is the stories they tell my children and they love it. And I know I've said this before, but ask an older person about a story when they were young. It's so wonderful to hear about it. Kids are good at making up stories that haven't happened yet. True. Some adults do that too. There are lots of things we don't know 
we don't know where we were before we were here or where we go when we die. I think some people have an idea. But right this minute, we are here together on this beautiful planet. Yes, we are. If you choose to come to Earth, you can stay in my room. <laughs> P.S. How many eyes do you have? Are you small or big? Do you have any pets? When is your birthday? Is it always dark where you are? Are you going to visit us? My friends and I want to know. What a great story. What a great story. Oh, haven't you always been curious as to what's out there? Who's out there? If they could come visit us, could we be friends? Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad Sophia Blackall wrote this book. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.